Welcome to Midwest Whitetail. It's the morning of November 10th, and it's a perfect, beautiful, frosty, cold, classic rut morning. I'm sitting on the edge of a, a doe bedding ridge. It's one of the best morning hunting spots on the entire farm. The ridge is behind me. There's a little draw that comes in in front of me, and on the other side of the ridge, there's another draw that comes up from the next valley over. So the ridge narrows down here and that concentrates the deer movement as they, as they go back and forth up and down this ridge. In fact, my biggest disappointment of the whole season took place in the stand I've got just 40 yards away on the other side of the ridge top. Yesterday morning, we had some problems with the wind so we didn't get in here until just a little bit late. I was in the tree getting prepared and Drake was still on the ground waiting to climb when the buck that we were hunting, this big chocolate horned eight pointer, made his way past the stand. 25 yards away, he spotted Drake and turned and ran. And Drake was able to film him once he stopped. The buck wasn't spooked bad. And I think that given the fact that we're in a doe bedding area, we're likely to get a doe to pop into estrus pretty much any given day. I'm not too afraid of coming back here and hunting that same deer in the same area more or less. If there's a hot doe here, he's gonna come past. That's just the way the rut is. So if you're looking for the very best morning spots, in fact, I think the best stands that you can hunt period during the rut is a morning hunt on the downwind fringe of a doe bedding area. Ideally, you can approach it from the back door, the direction opposite where the deer are feeding. That way you don't bump any deer on the way in and all the action's gonna be moving your way as the morning goes on. We've got a lot of rut hunting action for you in today's episode. But first, when we come back, we're gonna join Jared Mills. He's hunting the edge of a doe bedding area about 120 miles to the east of me this morning. Realtree's Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Cabela's, Easton Arrows, Frigid Forage, Fuse, Grizzly Coolers, Hoyt, Hoyman Tree Sauce, Muddy Outdoors, Nikon, Ozonix, Redneck Blinds, Rocket Broadheads, RTP Outdoors, Trophy Rock, Spot Hog Releases, Wilderness Athlete, Viking Solutions, and Realtree. If we want to be over here, we can either walk all the way in or we can maybe drive and park towards this end of that slough. Yeah. I would lean towards driving in just from a ground scent perspective. I think if we walk in, we lay a lot of ground scent and if we're in the buggy we can eliminate that. So if we take the bad boy then what do you think about parking in that slough because we should be able to get in right here. I think that'd be reasonable. I mean thinking about the three primary entrance points for deer coming back to bed that's probably the least disruptive of all the entry points for the deer. Yeah because I definitely don't want to park over here. Some of that movement especially with that corn being picked up there and get this movement back here along the river and we're gonna be hunting right there. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Yeah, the slough's probably the least disruptive. I mean, we're gonna be cutting off something, but if we can hide the buggy down in there, it should work out okay. So then when we get down there, it's gonna be tough. If we, we could maybe come back up and walk straight across or that's probably what we need to do is walk straight across, huh? Yeah, I think we need to see what the wind is doing. Uh, whether we need to be farther north up the bend or we can get on the south side of that grass patch. Yeah. And then uh, if the wind's cooperating, we can, uh, I would take the shortest route from the buggy right across. Yeah, hopefully the wind will be is, is going down the river like that because I'd rather be further south, a little bit closer to that bedding area. Yeah. That's definitely the spot to get in if our wind is favorable. And most of the trails go along the river, so we want to just 
traverse them once as opposed to walk along them if we can. Perfect. Well, let's get in there. We got hang stance. All right. inevitable we were gonna kill that deer wow sweet okay good start to the morning so that's a deer we call Gronk this is actually Jared's hunt but uh, since we both own this farm and both have tags I've got a I've got multiple tags I decided I'd shoot that deer as a management buck because he looks really really old and just to get him out of here and so I've been bringing my bow to the tree every day. I think that marks the sixth or seventh time we've actually seen that deer. Only the second time we filmed him. But uh, we were we got in here a little bit late. We just were sitting here talking. I thought I heard something and here he comes. He walks right to the base of the tree. And it looked like I buried that arrow behind his shoulder. He was quartering away pretty hard. Uh, about a 20 yard shot. So pretty pumped, excited to get a buck down. Give him a few minutes and then uh, take a look at the footage here, see how it looks.
Well, it's 8 o'clock now, and uh, Mike and I are just finally getting a chance to do a full interview. It's been a, a crazy morning already. We've seen a couple more bucks and a doe since Mike killed uh, early this morning. So we've been covered up. It, the weather's just awesome this morning. I think it was 8 degrees wind chill temperature when we got in the tree. Yeah, it's been, uh, as Jared mentioned, kind of a crazy morning, but a fun one so far. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we got in the tree kind of late. We are hunting on the edge of this doe bedding area, and uh, you know this is a new farm for us. We're not 100% sure how the deer moved through it. We wanted to get set up on the riverbank. Um, the wind is switching from northerly to southerly, um, northeast to southeast, and so we wanted to try to hunt it where we could manage the wind switch. We spent over 30 minutes at the truck this morning trying to figure out how to get in here, where to park the the golf cart, uh, etc. So we got back in here, had to find a tree to hang in, did a hanging hunt, and then uh, you know got set up after daylight basically. And then the first deer we see is uh, is that big mature buck. So pretty cool morning. It's always a little crazy though when uh, you're hunting these new places and trying to get back in the cover. So like I said, conditions are perfect for November 10th. You can't ask for anything better. So we're going to hang in here for a while and you know, hopefully see another good buck. Um, the morning's off to a really good start, obviously. about 10 30 now Mike and I are gonna start packing things up we got a lot to do this morning so we're gonna get down but it's been an awesome awesome sit other than obviously killing the buck this morning we saw a lot of deer just kind of moseying through back here like we talked about earlier we're pretty close to a couple doe bedding areas and uh, it's we just saw a lot of late movement a lot of you know eight nine ten o'clock does just meandering around an occasional buck would come through so it was a fun morning, and uh, we're anxious to pick up the blood trail and see if we can go recover Gronk. So we're standing here uh, where he was on impact, and there's immediate blood. That's a good sign. Looked like I buried the arrow up to the fletchings. Right behind the shoulder, he was quartering away. Aim for the offside shoulder, so... You're in, back up here in this thick grass, we're gonna start heading that way. Hey, see that deer right there? See him right there. He's about 10 yards to the right of that little buck. I can see that right three point side shining in the sun. Let's go take a look at him, shall we?
Yeah, boy. Been almost four hours. Oh dear. He busted off his brow time. Man. What a stud of an old deer. We got him tagged up and out of the woods so we can get a better look at him. This is the buck we call Gronk. And uh, the first buck we take off of our new farm, it's pretty awesome to only have hunted it you know, less than a dozen times and already have a mature buck on the ground. This is one of the very first bucks we got on camera. Um, we started running cameras a few weeks ago, picked him up, both decided he's obviously a five plus year old buck. Doesn't have the biggest antlers, cool rack nonetheless. And we put him on the management buck list. We've actually seen this buck, this is the fifth time uh, since we've been out here, and like I said, about 10 times. A couple times we were just checking cards on the cameras and he was constantly running around. We filmed him a few nights ago when Jared was hunting out near the cut ag fields. We saw him coming in that morning, uh, that was November 7th. And he's never with a doe and he's always running around, so we knew we'd have a good opportunity or a high likelihood of, uh, of seeing him at some point from the stand with the camera uh, and bow in hand. And uh, he happened to be the very first buck uh, that came in this morning, and um, it worked out pretty well. I, he was quartering away pretty hard. I slipped the arrow right through the only little tiny hole we had. He walked through just the smallest, um, basically the only area he could walk that I would get a shot at him. And, um, you know, buried in the offside shoulder, and he went about 80 yards and piled up. So a little bit on management bucks, you know, there's been a lot of research out there. People know that you can't change the genetics of your herd. But uh, Jared and I, as a management strategy, we like to take these big, old, mature bucks out if they don't have, you know, great antlers, or even if they do, just because they tend to run off the, uh, you know, the younger, good genetic bucks, our, our nice three-year-olds. These deer are very territorial, and they keep all those nice young bucks out of here, and, um, you know, we'd rather just take them off. They're not going to get any better, so you might as well harvest them and, and leave room for your other bucks to grow and mature. Plus, they're really fun to hunt. It's always nice to catch up with a mature buck with a bow and arrow. Yeah, it's pretty cool that, that we were able to get, as, as Mike was mentioned, we think this deer is the oldest, the oldest deer on the farm, the oldest deer at least we, that we've had pictures of. Um, so it's pretty cool to, to be able to get that. I mean, we've only been owners of this farm for 10 days now. So yeah. um, that's, it's pretty cool to already have a big mature buck, the oldest deer on the farm on the ground. You know, this morning was kind of chaotic. It was just one of those days where we didn't have everything lined up. You know, we couldn't decide whether we should walk. You know, with the switching winds, we were going to hunt on the backside against the river. And we had to cross basically the whole property to get there. So we were trying to decide, do we drive in, do we walk in? Where do we park the bad boy if we do drive in? How do we get to the stand? What, you know, where, where do we, which tree are we going to hunt in? Because we got to also hang and hunt two stands and set up sticks and all that stuff. I'll try and do do it quietly on a on a super calm morning uh, when there's a heavy frost on the ground. So I'm sure we made plenty of noise, but it was like you saw, it was like 6:50 when the, when this guy came in, and it didn't take long. Um, so pretty cool deal there. We also <laughs> got up in the tree and realized we left all the SD cards uh, for the cameras back at the truck, and we had half full batteries, couple dead batteries. So it was just a combination of things, but we were able to to make it work and uh, just a really cool hunt on a, on a cool buck. The reason I wanted to set up in that spot, it's kind of in between a couple doe bedding areas. There was a little grass patch that Mike and I have both seen a number of does bed in. And then on previous hunts, my hunt a few mornings ago, I watched a lot of does come back in to bed on the peninsula there um, on right next to the river. So I wanted to be right next to that spot November 10th great place to be and obviously this guy was cruising first thing 
and I think Mike mentioned it in the tree, but I was obviously hunting, um, but I already filled a buck tag a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, and Mike hadn't filled one yet, and we kind of talked beforehand if one of these management bucks came by, you know, we brought both our bows for that reason. We'd try to swap places, and, and Mike would, would take that buck out since he hasn't filled the tag yet, uh, other than his urban zone tag. So um, it, that's what happened to the tree. It got a little chaotic trying to swing the camera arm over, and he was he was closing fast. He didn't waste any time getting to the base of our tree. And then, of course, the excitement of Mike trying to find a shooting lane. So uh, as you can see, it worked out, and it was a fun morning. Yeah, and it's uh, November 10th, and the weather is awesome. It's still below freezing right now. And uh, we're going to get this guy loaded up and move on down to my farm and keep chasing him. We've got the next five days to hunt solid and each a bow tag left. So we're going to get back after him. So with any luck, we might catch up with another buck this afternoon. I had a fun day today, some pretty good action. So over these next couple of weeks, during the middle phases of the rut, we're focused on the same thing we've talked about in the theme of this episode, the killer rut stand. And that's staying as close to these doe bedding areas as you possibly can. Downwind fringe, uh, take advantage of the bucks coming in looking for those hot does. Well, that's what I'll be doing this coming week. I'm still gonna go after that lone oak buck. I'm ha I certainly haven't given up on that deer. We'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail, and remember to always dream big.